Get your ears wrapped around the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All the scoop you need to know from college basketball to the NBA and even March Madness. News of your rising stars. Topics on and off the hardwood. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. GSMC Basketball Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Ryan Mauser, back again for episode three of doing the GSMC Basketball Podcast. So I'm thrilled. It's been a lot of fun so far, getting to talk some hoops, uh, lots of NBA action been going on. We'll continue that today. I wanted to talk about Nikola Jokic and where the Nuggets stand right now. Are the Jazz for real? Coming off that big win uh, last night as I'm recording this on Thursday, February 25th. Uh, big win, blowout win over the Lakers last night. So I want to get into it. If, if they're a for real threat, if they can really win, not only win the title, but just make it to the finals. And also these Chris Stapps Porzingis trade rumors that the Mavs are reportedly shopping him and looking to deal him only two years after they got him. So we'll get into all that. But I want to start here. And with so much great basketball going on it's it's tough and uh, even if you have NBA league pass and you can watch as many games as you want and go back and find teams and old games it, it's tough to find a team to want to watch or obviously you're going to watch your favorite team first but here's a team that I think is the most fun to watch and I think that everyone needs to start tuning into their games and paying attention to and it's a little bit of a surprise because, one, this team hasn't been good for a long time. It's not a a main a main stay team or a big name team, although they do have a big name owner. So that, there's a hint. But it's the Charlotte Hornets. I mean, these guys are so much fun to watch. They're, they're my favorite team to watch, just from a pure fun, always competing. They have the recipe you, you would want in a team to watch. They got a young franchise star, LaMelo Ball, who they just drafted third overall this year. So they, they have that. They're, that's that's checkmark one. They play with a lot of swagger, which when you have a guy like Scary Terry on the team, I mean Malik Monk is just a guy who's going to try and ball out and not afraid to kind of get in your grill either. He saw him... Last night, getting into it a bit with uh, Devin Booker. Miles Bridges, P.J. Washington, Devontae Graham, who he's, he's been hurt for a minute, but when he plays, I mean, he was in the running for most improved player last year, and he's uh, ascended upwards every season, so that's another piece. They're one of the top three-point shooting teams in the league. I believe they sit right around the top, uh, top 10, and when you have that, I mean, it, it, it's fun to watch teams shoot threes. It, that's where our game has gone towards. Steph Curry revolutionized that by introducing these deeper and deeper threes and making it at this high rate. And the Hornets, they buy into that. They they like to take a lot of threes, and they make a lot of threes. So it they have they have that going for that. Their owner is Michael Jordan, as I referenced a little bit earlier. And when you have MJ with you, I mean, that's automatically attracting eyes to the product. He, yes, obviously he's not playing anymore, but it's still the, the Michael Jordan brand, and you want to see what's going to happen. What was it? A few years ago, we had the uh, the meme that happened, and people were posting on the internet. Him, I think it was slapping Malik Monk on the head. and It's like, what, what other owner can get away with slapping a player in the head? None. Uh, Michael can. And that's because... That's He's arguably the GOAT. 
But another little thing that always draws me to a team, and obviously because of the fact that not in Charlotte, so I don't, I'm not going to Hornets games, and I'm watching them on TV. But when I'm searching through a game, and with League Pass, specifically it gives you the option. Do you want to watch that team's broadcast, or do you want to watch the opponent's broadcast? I will always choose the Hornets broadcast, I think, over just about every other team's in the league. The broadcast team of Eric Collins, who does the play-by-play, and his color guy, Del Curry, so Steph and Seth's father, who played in the NBA himself, they make the games so much more exciting, and you can tell that they really, really care about the team. They enjoy watching the game. Even if it's a blowout, they're still finding ways to make it entertaining for you. It's just an overall really, really good broadcast. And for someone who maybe doesn't know a ton about the Hornets or have watched much Hornets games because of the fact that you're not going to get them on nationally televised games. They're not going on the Wednesday night ESPN or Thursday night TNT Sunday matinee game because for the longest time, I mean, they're the Hornets. It wasn't a big attraction. Maybe now with LaMelo Ball and the fact that they're right in that playoff mix and a little more competitive now this season – They maybe will get some more of those national televised games. And they did just release the new schedule, and so we'll probably get into that next week a bit bit as uh, the All-Star break approaches, and we'll hit, um, they'll have the All-Star game uh, March 7th, so next Saturday. But the Hornets, they, they just have a bunch of players, and they show up every game and will give you effort. That's all you can really ask for. In a team, I mean, they don't have the same level of talent as others, so you can't expect them to go in and win every game. And when I say the most fun team to watch, or my favorite team to watch, it's not that they're winning every game or they're blowing people out. It's that you're getting guys who are coming in every day and giving you a product that you want to root for. You want to cheer for these guys. You see them when they make a three. They're doing some celebrations, a little bit of dancing, maybe showboating a bit. A big dunk happens, a big block happens. You just watch them, and they're a team that you never want them to feel like they have a chance to win. Because the second you give this team a chance to win the game, they might outright steal it from you. I mean, you asked the Suns last night. The Hornets almost essentially stole that game from the Suns. There were many times in the first half that they could have put the Hornets away. They were up big in the first quarter and let the Hornets creep right back in. They had a 17-point second quarter lead, and then they finished the half. The Hornets were only down by one. And once you give a team like this, a, a scrappy who they're not expected to win the games, they, they're they coming in as the underdogs in just about every single game that they're going to be playing in. If you give them this idea that, oh, we can compete with these guys, you get them knocking down their shots and getting some momentum behind them watch out I mean what happened uh I referenced I talked about it on the last pod with Draymond Green getting those technicals in that game the Hornets they fought back there was many times that they could have been dead for and out of it and had no chance to come back in but they kept fighting they kept playing and because of that Terry Rozier was able to hit the game winning shot and win that game for them and yeah there was other occurrences in that game with Draymond getting the technicals and but it it still took the Hornets being in that position and being in striking distance and having the confidence to allow a player like Terry Rozier to be to hit that game winning shot I mean it helps that that's a guy who can get you 20 points in the quarter you have one of those yeah you're going to be in just about every game but they're an up and coming team. It's 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 something you can watch, and you want to cheer for them, because it's not like it's the Lakers who every year you, you that that's kind of one like the gold standard. It's not the Warriors who for a while they were the underdogs, rising up, and you, you did cheer for them. Well, then after a while they turned into the dynasty, and there was a bit of a a Warriors fatigue. It's not the Boston Celtics being. Having the most NBA or tied for the most NBA titles in the league. It's 
it's the Charlotte Hornets. That kind of unopposing team that you watch, you go, oh, I like their colors. That helps. I mean, aesthetically pleasing. You go, oh, I like those colors. They have the cool court that they do. The, the, the mint court, they call it. Everything about them is just a lot of fun. I, D- Devontae Graham, although he's hurt right now, he's a player that you can easily see if, if he's starting somewhere for you, if he's coming off the bench. It's, it's a spark plug. Terry Rozier kind of was looked at as, oh, maybe he's he can't be the guy for a team. And so Boston said, we'll take Kemba, and you guys can have Terry Rozier in a kind of uh, – Let's sign each other, trade them away, and it was essentially a trade, but they were both free agents, so they swapped. And you look at it and you go, ah, Charlotte probably got the better end of that. Terry Rozier is going to be able to score at the same level as Kemba. He may not distribute the, that level, but he's going to score. He's going to get people involved, and he plays with that chip on his shoulder. He, he's all he's, he's undersized. He's not this over-imposing player, and... Well, he, he, he fights for everything and, again, can score you 20 and a quarter and help you get a win. So I love watching the Hornets. There's just – they're a team you root for. I mean, who who doesn't want to see the l- lovable losers turn into the winners? And I, I'm not saying that they're going to have that, that Warriors-esque turnaround of these darlings going and – Going and turning into a dynasty, they could. I, I don't anticipate it happening, but you get a player like LaMelo Ball, LaMelo Ball who they hope is a franchise-changing turnaround guy, and he's that pass-first guard. I mean, people questioned whether he could make it in the league, and they they play they play with that factor on their shoulders of, okay, well, this guy was counted out. He Oh, he, he's, a, he's a ball. We've seen Lonzo. We, we know his dad has the big voice. He left high school early, didn't go to college, went to Lithuania. He has a messed up shot. There's all these negatives about him. And people said, like, oh, we don't think we don't think he can really make it in the league. And what's he doing? He's proven to be probably the rookie of the year as of now and has the Hornets in position to make the playoffs and to be a, a team that can challenge someone. I mean, you look at it last year in, in the bubble. You had the... Miami Heat, that five seed that went all the way to the finals. The Dallas Mavericks pushed the Clippers to six games, and you thought, oh, man, they might they might upset someone. When a scrappy team that isn't supposed to be there gets its invite to the dance and is within striking distance, watch out. They're going to rain threes all day. Now, will they hit all of them? No. They don't play the greatest defense. But they give they give a lot of effort. They have a coach who comes from that Popovich tree. So you look at him as being a smart guy. And we know how Popovich coaches. They have that reputation. It's, it's the Popovich tree. I will always take having the underdogs over wanting to watch, I'd say, the favorites. It's it's more fun to cheer for the underdogs. It's that David versus Goliath story of, yeah, you anticipate that the favorite's going to win most of the time, but when the underdog does come through and he does win, it's so much more fun and causes chaos, which everyone loves chaos, especially in the NBA playoffs, especially in an NBA season where this year it's not the 82 games, but it's it's a long season, and you do kind of get into this Uh, Well, we already know how it's going to play out. We already know Team A and Team B are going to make it to the finals. And so what's the point of watching the regular season? And for a team like Charlotte, it's because each game means something to them. Every game is important. They want to win every game. They're not going to, but they're going to fight. They're going to try. And it's, it's all you can ask for in a team. And I really do hope that this Hornets team falling into some super, I don't want to say superstars because there's only you only look at really Lamelo Ball as being the potential superstar for the team, but they have a lot of really good players and guys that you just want to root for. If you were going through and you're bored and say you have league pass or if you stream games, which go watch the Hornets. And again, I'm not saying that they're going to win every game. That's 
That's far from it. They might not even win half of their games. It's Who knows? But you go watch them. They put up a fight, and until that final whistle blows, you, you, you don't know what's going to happen with them. So Charlotte, easily my favorite team to watch. But also, if you're going to watch them, I'd highly recommend watching them on the Charlotte Hornets broadcast if you can. If not, just watch. Enjoy the team. Uh, hopefully, they get some more run on national uh, televised games. I haven't taken a look at the national televised schedule quite yet uh, and broken down all of the games and seen who's on what. I'm going to highly doubt that they're on too many. Maybe they get a couple here and there. But hey, throw on NBA TV. They'll go and highlight some games and or just go on YouTube. You can go on YouTube now and just watch them because this is a team to look out for. Because if you come to the playoff times and you expect them to get swept or to not put up a fight or to go away and get blown out in every single game and then you're surprised when they're taking, let's say, the Bucks two five games or six games or they're giving Philly a, a battle each and every night, you won't be surprised if you watch them right now. And this is all barring, obviously, injuries, staying healthy, props to Gordon Hayward, who when he optioned out of his deal in Boston, I thought he was crazy. I thought there's no way some team is going to give Gordon Hayward uh, another big contract. He he had the horrific leg injury in his uh, first season with Boston after signing the massive deal. He kind of struggled in Boston. It wasn't a great fit once he got healthy. They had kind of learned how to play without him. The positions kind of clogged up. And he took a chance on himself. And obviously, he, him and his agent knew, hey, there's a team out there that, that wants, to, wants to pay you again and give, give you a contract. And he's worked out great for Charlotte. It, it's been a really, really good pairing. He provides them with some solid shooting. He seems to be the, uh, a veteran on that team for them that the, the young guys can look towards and really use. And I'm I, I'm happy for him after that unfortunate injury that happened a few years ago of that leg injury, and you thought, is he ever going to be able to play again? And they just have a bunch of guys that you want to root for. And yeah, I can't say enough about the Hornets. Such a blast. Easily my favorite team. And again, I, I, I will watch, I'll watch any NBA team. Any NBA game, it doesn't matter. You, you put a you put an NBA game on for me, I'll watch it. It can be, it can be those T Wolves. It can be the Knicks. It can be the Hawks. And yeah, they're fun. They're fun to watch too. They all have bring something to the table. I mean, if you're watching the Knicks, it's uh, Emmanuel quickly, Ju- Julius Randle. See what RJ Barrett does. T Wolves, it's it's Cat. The Hawks, Trey Young. I don't want to say I don't like watching him. He's frustrating because he gets a little bit too much foul calls than I think he deserves. But the Hornets, this team, they just have a ton of guys that you want to watch. And they beat good teams. They they can compete with anyone. They beat they beat the Suns last night. They had that buzzer beater against the Warriors. They beat the Heat and the Bucks. And you beat those teams who are jockeying for the playoff positions and and are expected to be within that running at least if you look at the Bucks and the Heat they have plans of being back in the or one being back in the finals and one getting to the finals the Suns look like they're no joke this year if you compete with those teams you can essentially compete with anybody and I will watch you all day thank you Hornets for so far a fun first half of the season Hope they keep it up. I hope they make the playoffs so that more people do get to watch them. Because I think part of the problem for the Hornets is the fact that they're not on nationally televised games. And not everyone has NBA League Pass or streams games to watch or however you consume NBA action. You're you're not able to watch this team and you maybe just don't know about them. Besides the fact that Michael Michael Jordan is the owner. And some people might not even know that, but... 
I cannot highly I cannot recommend enough. Go go tune into the Hornets game. Watch five of them. And if you don't fall in love with that team and think, man, they're a blast to watch, well, I'm sorry, because they're just tons of fun and it's a great broadcast. Listen to Del Curry, listen to Eric Collins. They do a great job of providing you the act of what's going on in the action. All right, we're going to take a quick break, but coming up in the next segment, I want to shift gears and talk about a team who had some high expectations and has has not met those quite yet. Again, we still have a whole half of the season to go to, but they do have a player that's playing like an MVP and I think is the best big man in the game, and that's Denver Nuggets and Nikola Jokic. So I want to get into them, kind of talk about what's going on, why, why have they struggled a bit, where did he fits in the league and going forward. So we'll have that coming up next. Stay right there. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. GSMC Basketball Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. So we talked about the Hornets and why I think that they're the most fun team to watch in the NBA. Absolutely love them. Go check them out. Y- you won't regret it. They're they're a tons of fun. But I want to shift to another guy who I think is a ton of fun to watch and one of the best players, not just at his position, but in the NBA and a team that I do tend to root for and enjoy watching as well. Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets. Now, this season they have underperformed a bit. I mean, they sit 17 and 14, which has them 7th in the West. And that whole West grouping is a bunch together, so they could easily win three games in a row and be right there at the uh, four seed. So I don't look at the record and their, their, their position too much right now. It, it, it's still early. There is still a lot of time to play. But Jokic is easily, in my opinion, the the best center in the NBA. I mean, the guy can do everything for you. You can run your offense through him. He's going to get you rebounds, assists. He makes that turnaround, little one-foot jumper. Just look. And it's nothing to take away from Joel Embiid or Carl Anthony Towns or Rudy Gobert, or or all these centers. I, I, I don't, I'm not trying to say that he's so much better than them or that they're bad in any way. Just for me, he is the best He can cause, because he can do it all. He, he's money from the free throw line, and he's, he's a really entertaining guy watching some of his interviews, uh, hearing him talk post-game. I really enjoy uh, Jokic and makes me cheer for the Nuggets and and want to see them succeed because I want to see him go further. And after their run in the bubble, I mean, they came back from 3-1 down twice. You kind of expected them. All right, well, now now they had some expectations. And it was, can they build off that? Because they did make it to the Western Conference Finals. Jamal Murray was extraordinary in that bubble. I mean, some of those shots he was making in some of those games on on the routes – in route to the 3-1 comebacks, he was playing like a guy who had finally broken through and figured out, okay, here's my place. I know what I can do, how I can contribute. 
Mike Malone is a uh, phenomenal head coach. Really enjoy him. But injuries have come into play this year. They've had some COVID issues as well. And they're not the most sound defensively. Again, they're still a, a young team, a very young team. You look at them, and Murray's 24. Jokic is only 26. Gary Harris is 26. Michael Porter Jr. is 22, and I, I think Michael Porter Jr. could be a, a star in this league. And if he can get it really clicking defensively, he, he's he would be on his way to unstoppable because he's essentially a seven-footer that can do every, do everything if he really wants to. He, he can shoot threes, pass, drive. And it seems most of his issues is uh, – effort on defense it seems like he doesn't necessarily want to play defense and for the Nuggets if they're really if they're really going to be a a title contender and I think they have all the makings to it's it's got to start there it's got to start on their defense and number one that you, you kind of have to look towards Jokic as the leader of the team and the best player and say hey we need we need you to set the tone. We need a little bit more. He does a lot for them. Most of it on the offensive side. And it's not saying he's a bad defender. But when... But what you need is that you need your leader to set the tone. Because if your leader is diving after everything and giving it all he has on the defensive end... You can't help but have the other guys fall in line to that. Because if that's what the leader's doing, who are they to do anything less than that? But the Nuggets, they, again, they have that young core. So they're very young, and young teams do do tend to struggle on defense. Paul Millsap is not a young guy, and it, it's not the defender that he can ever really provide for them. But you look at them and you go, maybe this Nuggets team, the, the the one thing that they should do is maybe trade off one of these young guys and and bring in a little bit more either depth to the team or someone that's going to help out on locking down on that on the defensive side. Because they have tons of firepower. Jamal Murray can get you 30 a night. Jokic obviously can get you 30 a night. He'll, he'll get you 40 a night if he has to. Porter Jr. can heat up in a moment's notice. And same thing for Gary Harris and Will Barton. And Monty Morris is a good backup point guard for them. But what it's always going to come down to, and especially come playoff time, can you give me enough on the defensive side of the ball? Can you force a stop? Can you get three stops in a row? Yes, yeah, scoring's great, and obviously you need to score to win the game. But when you get into these shootouts, it doesn't always end well because you always need that stop. Because if you're going in it and just going, hey, let's get into a shootout with these guys. Well, then the team with the ball last is going to win, and that's not always going to be you. But if you can force those teams to need three shots to beat you, well, then your chances are obviously better to win. It's, 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 it's interesting. For the Nuggets, you you look at them and you go, well, why could why haven't they taken that next step? You thought it was oh, it was going to be a steady uphill, uphill climb. A couple years ago, they faced the Blazers and went to a seven game series with them, and they lost. And it was okay. Well, they're they're learning. It's they that they hadn't been to the playoff as that group, and now they got that more that experience that was needed, and a playoff series loss, and had seven games, and so they can learn from that. It's another year, and then last year they made the, a huge leap. And whether you want to say the bubble helped teams or not, it's it's up for debate. Either way, the games were played. The Nuggets came back from three one twice, and made it to the Western Conference Finals. And so you looked at it and you went, okay, well, so now we're going to set the standard that you made it to the Western Conference Finals. You can get there. And so this season, 
And again, this season's going to be all sorts of craziness. It's shortened. It started at a different time than it normally would have. Training camp was shorter. All of that is fair. But we've seen what they are capable of. So if we've seen you make it to the Western Conference Finals, that's always going to be what we're going to expect now, as long as you have that core, and especially with a young core like this. They're only going to continue to get better. And again, it, it's early. We're still in the first half of the season, and they can turn things around. And they're not... You win three in a row, you're right there in the top four seed. So there's plenty of time, and I'm not counting them out or anything, but it is a little frustrating, especially when Jokic is playing at an MVP level. I don't think he's the MVP. I think part of it, and team record is a little bit overrated. It's a factor, obviously. If you're you're playing like an MVP and your team is higher up in the standings, well, then you're winning more, so yes. But also, it's are you elevating all the guys around you? Are you making the team better? Or is it are you rubbing off on them as well as playing extremely well and doing your part? Because you you if if you're off the team, where where is that team at? Because MVP is the most valuable player, and if you're off the team and they're awful, well, clearly you're the most valuable on that team. But if you're – where would the Nuggets be without Jokic right now? If they're 17 and 14 and you take Joker off the team, I could still see them fighting for that play-in tournament. Obviously, it would be a lot tougher – but around that 10 seed, they, they could get some wins. They have some guys, and it's n- not taking anything away from Jokic. That's, I don't want to say that because I, I really do enjoy him. I think he's one of the best. But that that's partially why I don't have him as my number one MVP is because he has a tag team partner in Jamal Murray, who I think is a really good point guard and has been hampered a bit this season. Maybe he is a little fatigued from – the bubble it hasn't quite clicked again and maybe he is just a playoff time player but you hope that he turns around and figures it out and can help the nuggets to get back to the western comp finals or be competing for a championship but jokic is phenomenal and the nuggets have plenty of time to turn around and get things right And I think they will. I think they'll still end up being one of the last four teams in the West. I don't know if they make it to the Western Conference Finals this year again. I think teams are just better this year. I don't see the Clippers losing a 3-1 series lead again. The Lakers are right there again. The Jazz, I'll talk about them next. Definitely, I'll talk about the Jazz. as They have the NBA's best record and... That has been one of the most surprising things for me because I, I coming into the season, I didn't think that the Jazz were going to be that high. So we'll, we'll, I'll talk about them next. But again, it's another team that the Nuggets are going to have to compete against. You have the Warriors going to be right there. The Blazers are still around, and they will eventually get C.J. McConnell. M- C.J. McConnell, McCollum, excuse me. I was thinking of T.J. McConnell after watching him last night. And Yusuf Nurch- Nurkic. So... What what should Denver's expectations be? What what should we think of them? Where should they finish the season? Well, if you keep getting the performances, performance like you have been from Jokic this season, he continues to play at the MVP level. Well, then if you get a few more contributions from Jamal Murray, maybe a couple better nights, they stay healthier and they're not having guys for four guys missing from the game to where it's it's a limited rotation. If things just click for Porter on defense a bit more, why can't this team just get back to the Western Conference Finals or be right there on the brink of it or even get to the finals? I think they're a year away from truly being a title contending team just based off who else is in the West. But they're so young that they might be 
the perennial favorites moving forward for the West if they keep the if they keep the core together, if they can find a way to keep Jamal, Jokic, Porter, Harris all together for the most part. You may have to trade someone. You may have to find a way to bring in some more depth. But this team, they're well coached. They have guys. And when when they're at home in that altitude, they should be favorite favorites in every game. That seems like such a tough place to play. If you're visiting to Denver and you have to go play in that altitude, that wouldn't be enjoyable. That and that is a huge advantage. And they need to learn how to take advantage of that. And by locking up a bit more on defense, you're forcing teams to exert more energy. You're not making it easy on them. Every trip up and down the court is going to be a battle. So Denver, they do have time to figure things out, to get it turned around. They have pieces. And they showed you already that they can make a deep playoff run. And so that should be the standard that they are held to. I mean, Jokic sits sits right now with the highest player efficiency rating of all the centers in the league. If you're getting this kind of production out of him and you get the other guys to step up just a little bit more, just contribute a little more on both sides of the ball, they're going to figure it out. They have too much talent. They're too well coached. That they're going to be right in the thick of things this season, next season, and for as long as that group is together. But yeah, I, I, I bet it's if you're a Denver fan, you're a little bit frustrated by the 17-14 and 14 as of right now. Because you did just see them make it to the Western Conference Finals. So now that that's in your head. That's, hey, that, that needs to be the expectation year in and year out. And they should be. They should be held to that standard. And we'll see them tonight. Again, this is Thursday, February 25th that I'm recording this, so they'll play the Wizards tonight. The Wizards come in as one of the hottest teams in the NBA, coming off a a, a big win over the Lakers, five in a row now. This is a game you go, okay. You don't want to say it's it's a measuring stick type of game. But if you can cool down a hot team, that says a lot. Because all you want to do is continue to build momentum. Because we are going to approach the All-Star break here very shortly. It'll, it'll happen next next week is the All-Star game. And then once the second half, season, second half of the season starts, it's a full go. And it's all right. Now we start to figure out who is going to be the real contenders, who are pretenders, who can separate from the pack? I mean, that, that Western Conference is tight, and it's tough. And you don't want to be sitting there having to fight in that play-in tournament game. That's just not where you want to be. And all it takes is a three-game win streak to be right there at that four seed. You get some games here and there. You get some breaks. I don't want to say you hope for COVID breakouts because no one wants that. But it's happened this year. And you're going to get teams where you're facing them and they only have eight guys, nine guys. And you you, you take advantage of that. You have to, all right, they only have a certain number of players available. Well, that's that's just, it's the luck of the draw for us. So don't worry, Denver. They'll they'll turn it around. They'll they'll be right there at the, they're going to be a playoff team. They're not going to fall out of it. Things haven't started off as hot as you would have liked. I thought coming into the year, probably they'd be a a one seed, two seed, three seed. They might not be that this year. Utah's gotten off to such a great start that it's going to be very tough to catch them. I don't see the Nuggets at all catching them. If anybody can catch them as (laughs) for the one seed. 
But hey, if you're a four seed, how are you feeling about that? Are you happy with that? Is that a good enough spot? Because again, you'd be you'd be the hosting the first round series. You're getting four games at your place at least. And again, in Denver with that altitude, I don't want to be anybody that has to go there. You're going to continue to get the play that Jokic has provided so far. He's too good. He's an all-star. He's an MVP candidate. He's one of the best players in the league. And he's 26, and you're going to get that for a while. Denver's in a great shape. But also, you don't want to continue to be that team that, oh, well, they'll continue to improve, and next year will be the year that they finally break through. Or, oh, they're two seasons away. Because that adds up quick. And you don't want to be the team that's always looking ahead and, oh, we'll get them next year. Or, oh, this was a good learning moment for them. Those are all great. But Denver's had a couple of those now. Back-to-back seasons have been good learning moments for them. Now it's time. All right, let's see them put it together. Let's see them really break through and be the team that they can be. Because they have that potential. They have pieces. Michael Porter was a steal for them because they got him at the 14th pick, if I'm not mistaken, at the back end of the lottery because he was dealing with the injury. And he they didn't need him to contribute in his first year, so he rested the entire time. But he was looked at as the number one overall prospect at one point. And you got him at the back end of the lottery. And so now you find a way, all right, how do we get him to buy in on defense? How do we get him to fit in with all these guys? Because, again, he's only 22. There's still lots of time for hit to click to him. It's now his third season, so you're expecting, all right, let's see what, let's see what he can do. Can he, can he start to figure it out and mold himself into this? Or do you potentially use him as trade bait and make the team deeper? Send him off somewhere who doesn't quite want to win right now but could use a good, true franchise piece. I think Denver should look to incorporate him and move towards him being their number two guy behind Jokic at a certain point. Because you can't teach seven-foot height with a three-point shot. And if he can lock it on defense, there's nothing he can't do. So Denver, you'll be all right. And they'll be good, continue to watch this season, and they'll figure it out. They'll have a, a pretty deep playoff run. But I hope for your sake, it's they figure out how to break through sooner than later before it's too late. And they have to start breaking up the band. Quick break, but coming up next, I do want to get it talking about the Utah Jazz. Because I did not think they were going to be a playoff team this year. I thought they were going to have to fight for it. And they're proving me dead wrong. Best record in the league. Are they for real? We'll get into that next. Stay here. We'll be right back. It's the GSMC Basketball Podcast on the GSMC Podcast Network. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info.
everybody. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast on the GMC Podcast Networks. So we talked about the Nuggets and my expectations for them and Jokic and kind of what's been going on with them this season. I gave you my favorite team to watch moving forward. Now here's a team that has surprised me probably the most of anybody this season. The best record in NBA NBA sitting Utah Jazz. So coming into this season, I did not think that the Jazz would be the best team in the NBA record-wise. I even had them possibly fighting for the playoffs. I I wouldn't have been surprised had they been a playoff team. I thought they were going to regress a bit and be on the, not necessarily outside looking in, but in that that range of, okay, well, it's going to take a good little finish for them to get in and maybe be a 7 seed, or they could be a 10 seed on the way out. But what have they done this year? Is best record in the NBA, top three in points per game, second in opponents' points per game, they're top three in three-point percentage, and top three in defending the three-point. So they they get a lot of points, they make a lot of threes, and they don't give up a lot of points, and they don't give up a lot of threes. Pretty easy plan of success. Yeah, let's score a lot and not let other teams score. Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert, both all-stars. Both playing tremendous. Jordan Clarkson. I'm not a big Jordan Clarkson fan. My frustration from him stem from finals and him not being able to come through. He is currently sitting as the sixth man of the year right now. He comes in, he's providing a huge spark for them off the bench, allowing if Donovan Mitchell needs to sit and not do as much on offense, get some rest, if they're stalling out and not necessarily scoring a bunch right now, he's coming in and he's providing instant offense. He's averaging 18 points a game off the bench. Yeah, I'll take that from from my guy. I'll take that from my six man. I'll take that from one of my starters. The Jazz have absolutely shocked me. And they're dominating teams. They're handling teams. Just last night, dominated the Lakers from start to finish. And yeah, you look and you go, okay, well, the Lakers they didn't have Anthony Davis. He's going to be out for four weeks. Did they have that effort in there? No Dennis Schroeder still. Doesn't matter. The Jazz thumped them. So I want to ask the question. Are the Jazz for real? Is this truly a team that can compete for the for the title, make a deep playoff run? Last year, the, the Jazz ran into... They were up on... The Denver Nuggets, and like I talked about last segment, the Denver Nuggets were able to come back from 3-1 down and surprise many people and many teams and the Jazz being one of them. That might have been a huge learning moment for them. Blowing a 3-1 lead is one of the toughest things to do in sports. And it has to be an eye-opening moment of, okay, we can't we, we can't mess around anymore. This team has too much ch- talent on them. Mike Conley has been a great fit for the Jazz. Joe Ingles, lights out, three-point shooter. Bogdanovich, providing that sharp shooting also. But it starts with Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert. And there was many people that wondered if it was going to work out, especially after what happened with Rudy Gobert's positive COVID test and how many people said he was kind of willy-nilly with taking the right precautions and being ahead of everything when uh, COVID kind of first was breaking out. He had the thing with the reporters where he was touching all their all their mics and gear and it was it looked at like, uh, maybe not, that's not the best thing to do when we have this unknown virus going on. 
and he tests positive, and that's when the NBA shut down. Then it was announced Donovan Mitchell tested positive, and it was, okay, well, who gave it to who? Doesn't matter. They kind of had a, a rough patch of a relationship. And so you thought, okay, is, is, is are they going to have to break up? Are they going to have to separate? Can they... Can they work through whatever issues there were? And clearly, on the basketball court, things are smooth sailing right now. 26 and 6. 26 and 6, best record in the NBA. And again, they're dominating teams. It's 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 impressive to watch because normally you're not looking at the Jazz as this juggernaut of a team. But here they are manhandling guys they are they just tied they they just set the record for combining for 53s in a two game stretch they don't miss they just hit their shots they they drain them now is it sustainable will they continue to hit at that clip probably not i mean there's going to be some sort of Regression in their shots, and they're not going to necessarily lead the league in three point percentage. They could, but you would think that it would it would regress a bit. Are they for real? You have to think they are, because twenty six and six right now speaks for itself. I was thinking about this the other day. I think I came across it on Instagram, and it was showing. The 2014-15 Atlanta Hawks. And that team is the... They had the four All-Stars. They had Kyle Korver, Jeff Teague, Al Horford, and Paul Millsap. They had the best record in the East that year. 60 wins. I think they were only seven short of the best record in the NBA. But you always kind of knew with them, yeah, they're not going to make it to the finals. They're not going to win the finals. They're a good team. They have all-stars. They have the most wins in the league. But they never felt like the best team in the East. What happened to them? LeBron and the Cavs and Kyrie and Kevin Love went in and and swept them in four games. And it kind of was like, yeah, yeah, they had the best record and they had the home court. But it never really felt like they were the true best team in the East. And unfortunately for them, it was proven right. So you look at this Jazz team and you go, yeah, they have the best record, but are they the best team? Should they be looked at as the the measuring stick and the favorite to win it? I don't think so still. I think they're they're obviously a really good team. And they have a lot of players at all positions. And they have two all-stars in Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert. And I don't want to say that they're the 60-win Hawks team. Because those all-stars are not the same guys as Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell. Gobert, defense player of the year. Donovan Mitchell, one of the best young guys we have in this league. And they have a lot of guys that can score and shoot and play make. So I'm not going to say that there's a 60 win Hawks. But it does kind of feel like you look at them and you go, yeah, they can win the regular season and win, have the best record. But when it comes to the playoffs, and after already blowing the 3 1 lead, we've seen it happen. We saw them blow the 3 1 lead. Doesn't matter that it was in the bubble, it doesn't matter. Whatever it was, they had the 3-1 lead, and they blew it. It sits in your mind that until they win the playoffs, a playoff series again, until they get over that hump of get 3-1 out of there, because it's always going to creep up until they, they win the series or win a series. We know that's true. We know that's how it, how it is. It's, there's going to be that narrative of if they get up on a team 2-1 in the playoffs. It's going to be like, oh, they were they were up 3-1 last year, and you know what happened. And if it came down to it again this season, 
I don't think we'll see a 3-1 series blown lead at all. Again, you never know, but it, it's going to be different. It's not going to be the neutral site. It's not going to be the bubble. You're going to be able to be at home. And if I'm a team, I don't want to necessarily go to Utah. That place can be raucous. It's going to be – they're going to have fans in there. They've already started to have fans. Players and coaches are already talking about te- games when they go where there are fans there. That's a different vibe. It's a different energy. If you're if you're a Jazz team and you get a home playoff series – and you're the one seed. Those fans are going to be going crazy. No matter how many there are, just having some is going to be an advantage. But can they beat the Clippers and Kawhi and Paul George and Lou Will if he's still around? Will they be able to stop Anthony Davis when he's healthy, LeBron James? Will Denver come in yet again? They've already gone... And beat them in a 3-1 series. They came back on them. They're not the 2015 Hawks. But I still do not see them as a true title team. And maybe it's just the fact that I kind of want to be right and at least get some of it right that they... I'm already wrong. They're they're well beyond being a playoff team. But it it feels like until they do it, until they win the series, until they make it to the finals, I can't have them be put into a spot that they haven't gotten yet. Will LeBron come through and do what he did to those Hawks? Let them be the number one seed. Let them be, quote-unquote, the favorite. But when we all know when it's playoff time, they're not the favorites. They're fun. They're a good team to watch. I talked about the Hornets being one of the uh, my most fun team to watch in the league. The Jazz are up there. Again, you make a lot of threes. You dominate teams and flip a switch and all of a sudden you turn a 12 point deficit into a 30 point win you're a lot of fun to watch you have a defensive player of the year on your team the stifle tower you have a human torch in Jordan Clarkson who comes off the bench and just lights it up you're gonna be a lot of fun to watch I'll root for you I like Donovan Mitchell a lot Mike Conley it was a big fan of him when he was in Memphis but a favorite, a true contender, I don't think so. And you can call me a hater. That might be it. I I, I could agree with that, that if you were like, oh, you're just hating on the Jazz because you picked them not to be that great this year and they're the number one team in the NBA. Yeah, that's fair. But it just feels like Utah isn't that team. That it's going to be one of the L.A. teams coming out of the West. And that's an easy thing to say because that's what everyone assumes is that it's going to be the Clippers and Lakers and we're kind of destined for that. But we were destined for that last year and it didn't happen. Denver threw a wrench in that plan. Who's to say that the Jazz don't do what Denver did last year and knock out one of those teams? And it goes, no, 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 we, we are the best team. We are representing the West. And they go to the finals. And hell, even win it. I don't think that's going to happen. It'd be fun. It'd be a surprise if it did. And you could probably argue, hey, Donovan, Rudy, should get some MVP consideration for putting their team at 20 and six, 26 and 6 record right at this point. And again, there's still a lot of season left to play out. We, we, we have to see what goes on. Anybody can make a push and challenge them and... Maybe they finish the season. They're not the number one seed. I, I, They're only three and a half games up on the Clippers and four and a half on the Lakers. And those two teams, I don't feel... It doesn't seem like they need to win the West as much as the Jazz need to win the West. 
They're a really well-coached team. Quinn Snyder has them playing great. They're getting contributions from a lot of different guys. And you do have your two cornerstone pieces. I just can't say that they are a true title contender. Now, are they for real? I'd say yes, they are for real. For real for winning the West and representing the West in the finals? Probably not. Probably not. And... They may prove me wrong once again. And if they do, I'm happy for them. And that'd be cool. And you, it's a change of pace. It's a different team representing, kind of like Miami did last year. Of No one really expected the Heat to go and make that run. The bubble kind of su- suited them perfect. And you might look at it last year and go, oh, the bubble was the worst thing for the Jazz. The, the circumstances that surrounded that team led to the 3-1 collapse. The issues that were involving Gobert and Mitchell and recovering from COVID, those are all very fair points and could be proven completely right. That it was just unforeseen circumstances that led to them losing. And they come this year and they roll and they have no issues in the playoffs. But until they do it, until I see them do it again and and fix, fix the issues that they ran into... Last season, I can't say they're they're, they're for real title contenders. And who are real title contenders? Who are the for real ones? Now you go Lakers, you go Clippers. I would still put the Nuggets within that range. Take out the Blazers. Take out the Spurs. Take out the Suns. The Warriors, I wouldn't want to run into the Warriors in the playoffs. They have Steph Curry, one of the best players in the league. If they had Klay Thompson, it would be easy to put the Warriors there. And then out east, you go, all right, well, there's the Sixers. The Bucks are still going to be there. The Raptors, they got championship DNA. They know what it takes. They're kind of figuring their thing at their their thing out. It was a tough start for them. The Nets obviously are going to be right in that range, although I still think that they don't play enough defense to win the title. They can score with anybody and they they will outscore anybody. But they can't stop anybody. So if they go cold, they're in a lot of trouble. Now they've rattled off seven straight wins and we who knows? We could get a Jazz versus Nets NBA Finals. The way those two teams are playing right now. And that'd be a great change of pace. But for the Jazz, it seems I want to see them do it and get over that 3-1 lead. And maybe they don't care about it. Maybe they go, hey, it was the bubble. That wasn't us. This is a different team. They have a different mentality heading into it. And that very well may be true. But until they do it and they shake off whatever happened, there will be those lingering questions of, can this team get over that hump? Do they have it in them? So props to the Jazz for the great start to the first half. Let's see if they finish it off strong and can continue to build off it. Gobert, Mitchell, Clarkson, Ingles, Conley, all those guys. They're playing tremendous. They are a lot of fun to watch. I do enjoy them. Are they for real? I'm going to say no for now. Now in, let's say, five weeks, we'll come back, and they're continuing on this pace. All right. I'll, I'll change. I'll adjust. I'll admit that I'm wrong. But right now, on February 25th, I'd say they're not for real title contenders. They're not quite the 15 Hawks, but they're within throwing distance of that team. And that was a great thing for Atlanta for that year. They made it to the conference finals. But in the end, we all really knew who the favorites were, and we kind of knew what was going to happen. We'll see if the Jazz can prove me wrong at that point. 
All right, stay right there. We're gonna come back. We're gonna take a break. Come back and do one more segment. I wanted to get into these these trade rumors of Kristaps Porzingis. Didn't the Mavs just get him? So we'll get into that. Finish it off. Stay right there. This is the GSMC Basketball Podcast on the GSMC Podcast Network. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast on the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm Ryan Mauser. So, all right, so I told you I don't think the Jazz are for real title title contenders. They can make a playoff run, but I don't think they're a real title contender. I think the Nuggets have some issues. Jokic is phenomenal. They'll be okay. And the Hornets are easily my favorite team to watch play this season. But I want to finish up here. And it's a little a little early for trade rumors, but we're we're getting closer to it. Trade deadline is the 25th of March, so exactly a month away. So we're going to start to hear some rumblings. And one of the big rumblings that's going around right now is someone who was just acquired not too long ago. And it may not be super surprising because he hasn't played particularly well. It hasn't been a it's it hasn't been smooth sailing all the way. But this is a guy who when 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 they acquired him, it thought to be almost a missing piece. And that's Chris Stapp's Porzingis and the Dallas Mavericks. So rumors coming out now that Dallas has quietly, although how quiet is it if it's being leaked to the media and now is on ESPN and Bleacher Report and all these other sites saying the Mavs are talking about trading Porzingis. Trading Porzingis is interesting because he was supposed to be the the perfect fit perfect fit with Luka and he had a good bubble run so he played well in the bubble averaged 30 30 and a half points nine and a half rebounds and one and a half blocks shot 38 percent from distance and they he helped the Mavs push the Clippers but again the number one thing that has hurt his career is him being hurt he tore his meniscus and then ended his season He had surgery in October and didn't get back until January 13th. And since he's been back, it's just he's not the same guy. He can't defend at a high level. He just can't move a ton. And for the Mavs, it's been a challenging season. It's been frustrating. We've heard Luka talk about this. We've seen him in certain situations where he's ripping his jersey. And you can see the frustration. You also see the glimpses of this team being really good and being a true playoff team. And when you have a guy like Luca, who many are looking at as the next superstar of the league and the, the next guy, once LeBron officially leaves, you want him to be in the playoffs. You want him to continuously be on TV and in these big spotlighted games and you want him to be winning those games. And for Dallas, 
that hasn't necessarily played out for them well. It's been it's been a tough go of it. They're still in that ninth seat at 15 and 15. Things have started to right the ship a bit more. They've won seven of their last 10 games. But would trading Porzingis help the team and push them into that next level? When they traded for 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 Porzingis, everyone said that the Knicks got fleeced, and that what what a win for the Mavs and Porzingis, and it was a little bit of a surprise that hey, it happened and they got him and he was injured at that point still, so he wasn't playing yet. And he recovered, and you thought, all right, here we go. The Mavericks have their new Steve Nash, Dirk 2.0, and Luka and Porzingis. And apparently the two are very close. They get along great. But on the court, it's been a mixed bag, especially this season. Porzingis has been, it's tough. He's, he's trying to find his legs about him. He's trying to get his confidence back. He he doesn't seem as aggressive anymore. And you wonder, is the best thing for him to be traded out of Dallas? And is that the best thing for Dallas, who they do want to, at some point, winning sooner than later? Because they do have this budding superstar in Luka. And again, he's only 21, so they have lots of lots of time to get this thing figured out but again you want to get this figured out sooner than later as opposed to continuously look into the future and saying oh we'll get them next year we'll get them next year because these players get pricey they get expensive and the sooner you can win with them under team control and before that big contract is better for the team and it helps the player because if you win early on you're going to be able to ask for a lot more. And yeah, it's a salary cap league, so you can only ask for X amount of money and whatever Luca gets, which is going to be the super max, is going to be well-deserved and given to him. But even he has been not as sharp this year, and he, he's, he's taken some of the blame, and there's frustration in Dallas as this team, you looked at him heading into the season as that's kind of a wild card deep playoff team and so far it hasn't been the case for them and still early they could still have time to figure it out and get the right pieces but trading Porzingis is that the right move now I'm going to say you want Porzingis as your last line of defense especially after all the injuries and it, it hasn't been that great for him and it hasn't been that great for the team to have him as their lone center but is trading him away the right move? And again, it's going to be tough to trade him. Because he still has three years remaining on a five-year, $158 million deal. Is who, who can you find to be a trade partner with that? That's a tough sell. That's a really tough sell. Now, apparently they approached the Warriors uh, about a possible deal... And nothing has been talked about that. And nothing has moved past that they reached out. And you would have to think if they reached out, what were they they were asking for? And you could assume that be, the way the contract lines up, that Draymond, was that, that who they were going for? Is that the right pairing for Luka? I'd say absolutely not. You want to get Luka more shooting around him because he has the ball in his hand and can play make for everyone. I, I'd want more shooting, and that's what they tried to do in getting Josh Rich, Josh Richardson this season, who that hasn't quite worked out as well as they had hoped. Tim Hardaway, it, maybe they need to upgrade over him. But if, if you're the Mavs, I, I don't know if I necessarily want to Trade away Porzingis, as opposed to just shift him a bit, maybe move him completely to the four, and you're not having him be the, the center trying to lock down all those guys. A name that was floated around, Andre Drummond, who 
is going to get traded. It's a matter of when, not if, and the Cavs are holding him out from playing as they look for a trade for him. So if if the Mavs went and got Andre Drummond, now they have a guy rim protecting and Luka can toss lobs to all day if he wants to. Doesn't help their shooting. Doesn't get them more shooters. I can't believe that they let go of Seth Curry because <laughs> Seth Curry is one of the top shooters in the league and it was a nice little fit and he's doing well in Philadelphia who last year all you could say about Philadelphia was, man, if Philadelphia had some shooters, well, they went and caught one and they got him in Seth and it's been a great fit. But also one of the issues is that if you're going to try and trade Porzingis, is his relationship with Luca? They are good buddies. They are good friends. During the bubble, they were seen hanging out all the time. Do you risk alienating your superstar by trading his really good bud? That doesn't seem like the move you want to make. And I get you you got to look at it and try and make the team better and whatever you have to do and how whatever move you got to make to get them better. But isn't the best bet to hope Porzingis kind of finds his footing, gets healthier, his body's back, and that way he's not a huge liability and is by going out and getting a new center the right move so that he's not forced to be battling all these bigs anymore. And that can ease some ease some pressure off him. Is it going and getting another guy to assume the role of number two option? So that again, it takes some of the load off of Porzingis and he doesn't have to be Luca's number two option. Because Porzingis would still be a good third option and if you're not relying on him to give you 27 a night and you needing him to get those 10 boards or your expe- your expectations drop and it's not such lofty weight on his shoulders well, then maybe he finds his form a bit better because he can still be a knockdown shooter he's 7-3 with a jump shot it, it's very you're not going to find those. there's a reason his nickname was the unicorn and before the injuries that's exactly what he was but injuries catch up and his body, it, it's taken time for him to get back his footing, to get confident, and to feel like himself. I just don't know if trading him away is the right move. And again, that's a tough contract to trade. I don't want to say it's the worst contract to trade, but it, it's pretty tough. A, a guy who can't play defense really, so far hasn't found his shot and still has three years of a $158 million deal left? What What are you going to get back for that? Especially if you're Dallas and you're trying not to eat any of the salary and you want to move off and wipe your hands clean of it, you're not going to get great in return if you don't eat some of that contract. And there was the hope in Dallas that they had open space to make a run at Giannis. Well, obviously those plans were dashed before they could even begin because Giannis re-signed with Milwaukee and isn't going anywhere. So you can scratch that off the table and move that away, and that's not going to happen. So now they pivot and figure out, because they didn't go and spend very much this offseason because they wanted to keep their books open, which is fair. But you also didn't improve the team this year. And they could have been a team that competed this year. They have Luka Doncic. We, we, we saw what they did in the bubble, pushing the, the Clippers to six games. Luka hitting that buzzer beater in game two. Porzingis was a force in that series. Now he unfortunately got hurt and kind of doomed any chance they had of winning that series. I don't think trading him is the right move. But making some trades to improve the team, I'm all here for. 
Can you go out and find some more shooters around them? Can you go out and get a center to alleviate some of the pressure on Porzingis? But sending away your star player's best friend on the team does not scream like the move to make. Especially if you're going to have to eat a lot of that contract to get him moved. But now you're going to start to hear more and more rumors going around because we do we we are getting a month away. We are a month away from the trade deadline, so it's going to be here quick, and the rumors are going to be flying, and the NBA likes to make headlines and make some moves happen. That's why we love this league. But one thing that should not be moved is Porzingis for the sheer fact that it, it, at the moment, does it make sense if you can't get the return that you're hoping for? You hope. You play it out this season. And he can find somewhat of his form back. And that helps out. Because then if, you, if, you st- if it still doesn't work out, you can go to Luka in the offseason and say, look, we tried. We paired you two. It's not quite working. We can maybe make it easier to trade him to get you. Who else would you want? What what else do you want for this team? Because all moves should go through Luca because he is your franchise. It'll be interesting what happens if he does get moved. I mean, who could who could he go to? Is the real question. If they were asking the Warriors, yeah, I don't know if that really really helps the Warriors. Draymond kind of fits them if, if that's the route they were thinking. They've kind of that's not necessarily the move I would make. You they could use some more shoot consistent shooting. I mean, they'd want some more defensive help and yeah, they get size, but Porzingis isn't isn't the mobile size they use. And Wiseman's back, and so he should keep keep developing. But if they can go get a different big, that uh, that's smart by the Warriors. So if you take the Warriors off the list, I mean, who is there? What you would think you'd have to go to a contending team? Is that where you're going to try and ship them? But what contending team wants a huge defensive liability that you're not sure what you're going to get offensive either, offensively either? So it's really limited in options. So it seems like the most likely one is play it out. Play out the rest of the season. You're in a spot to still make the playoffs. You're in a position that you can climb up the standings and and make a run. And who knows, once you get into the playoffs, anything can happen. We've seen it before. Again, they, Luka's still a young superstar. You still have time. But you want to start planning, and they were planning for the future and leaving up space for Giannis. And so those plans are gone. So you adjust. But Porzingis being dealt, I don't know if that's the move. Go at shooting. Get some defensive help because that team does not stop anybody. And we've seen it in close games. It, it, it's tough for them. Yeah, they had the win against the Celtics earlier this week. Luka hit the buzzer beater. But that's a Celtics team that they're in a whole mess of trouble. That team does not... I, I, I talked about on the last podcast. I don't know what's going on with Boston. There's many issues for a team that has Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, those two all-stars. They're in a world of trouble. Because they're just going to continue to fall in those standings. But I do love trade time. Hear the rumors flying. Who's going where? Especially when trades happen, all the movement. We already had the blockbuster of James Harden happen this year, so you can take that one off the table of one that's already already gone down. And that was wild in itself. A four team trade. We're gonna get we're gonna be getting there soon. It's gonna be picking up even more so once the all star break happens. Players are meeting with each other in the games even though I don't think the game should be happening, but that's a topic for next week. So Kristaps being talked about as trade potential is very, very interesting. I don't know exactly where you'd want him to go. 
I don't know who would necessarily want him. But, hey, teams are always listening. They're always looking to make moves and improve and change things up. And if you can get the right deal for him, well, well, then there you go. Then you make it happen. But you have to make sure that it all is okay with your number one star in Luka because that's his good buddy. And you never want to alienate the star. Look at the NFL right now. What did the Seahawks do with Russ? They're not listening to him. He wants out, but he says he doesn't want out. It's a it's a mess. Deshaun Watson's telling people he's not coming back. Don't alienate your superstars. Listen to them. Talk to them about what plans you have with the organization, how they think the team should be moving forward. You don't have to bow to their every needs like Houston did with James Harden because that blew up on them and that didn't work out. But communicate with them. Talk to them. Figure out what direction they think that the team should go in. And if it works out, make it happen. But don't trade his best bud without talking to him first. And that, it, they, they might have already done that. And that's why it was being talked about and they were shopping him. Because Luca may be okay with that. But if not, that's a dangerous route to go. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of the GSMC Basketball Podcast. I want to thank you guys for listening to the GS- GSMC Basketball Podcast. It's always brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I would like to ask that you please remember to subscribe to the show and write a nice review. It really helps us. Also, if you can please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, it's always appreciated. Thank you, have a good night, and I'll talk to you guys next week. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program